Hello everyone and welcome to a Rise Up cooking class. This is specifically for our Healthy Skin Care Challenge. So we're going to be using foods that are good for your skin inside and out. And if you had a chance to listen to my video about the blue ribbon foods, I talked a lot about cruciferous vegetables and also about coconut. And we're gonna be using two of those types of foods today. So we're going to be using kale today. We're also going to be using coconut as well. Coconut, on the other hand, is also extremely nourishing and healing to the digestive system. And we're also using sweet potatoes, and they are too. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I have an order that will make sense with the timing that we have. So I've already asked those of you online, if you're cooking with me, to go ahead and preheat your oven to 450 degrees. I tend to um, use a temperature between 375 and 450 whenever I am roasting any type of vegetable because it gives it that nice, crisp outer edge that we all love. And I also ask you to throw your baking sheet right in the oven now because the hotter the baking sheet is, the crisper the outside edges of your vegetables will be. So it's, it's awesome to put them on a really hot pan instead of putting them on a cold pan and then you get the vegetable that's roasted but it won't get as crispy and especially when we're making our sweet potato fries, we want that nice crispy outer edge so it tastes like it's coming right from a restaurant. Okay, so welcome everybody. I'm Stephanie Wharton. I'm a board certified integrative nutrition health coach and I am one of the co-founders of Rise Up, an integrative wellness membership where you can come and get functional advice for your wellness journey. We also have our mentor calls, um, these live interactive cooking classes, tons of demos, recipes, and functional advice all month long. And this month we are focusing on skin care. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is get the french fries in the oven. So if you have a baking sheet, actually, before we do that, we are going to dress our sweet potato fries. So I asked everybody to come with their sweet potato fries already in that fry-like style. So you should have some sweet potato fries that are nice and um, long slender. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and dress the french fries while they are in our mixing bowl and then we're going to put them on our baking sheet, pop them in the oven, super easy. Okay, so we're gonna start with an oil. Grab an olive oil or an avocado oil. I tend to lean more towards an um, avocado oil when I am putting things in the oven because there's a higher smoke point than olive oil, which is really good to use for some cold preparations. However, I understand that not everybody has um, avocado oil on hand, so you can also reach for coconut oil as well. Actually, in the theme of using coconut, I'm gonna go ahead and use coconut oil. So I'm gonna grab a spoon. And I'm just going to take, now this is pretty melted because it's warmer than room temperature in here. So I'm just kind of gonna drizzle over my sweet potato fries. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix up so that there's a nice thin coating of oil all over the fries. So you might only need like a tablespoon or two of oil. You don't need a whole lot because if you drown these with oil, they'll have a harder time getting crispier in the oven. So you really just need a light coating. Need a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my Himalayan salt and sprinkle some, and then I'm gonna season these up a little bit. So even if you're just using plain coconut oil and salt, it's amazing, it tastes great. But if you want a little bit more of a kick, you could throw on some other spices as well. Okay, so that has a pretty good coating onto it. So I'm gonna take my pink Himalayan salt and I usually use, um, ooh, my pan is making noises in there. I'm gonna take my pink Himalayan salt and I'm gonna sprinkle a decent layer over the top of this. And I, I usually only use pink Himalayan salt and sea salt. I go back and forth between the two because they have a ton of minerals in them. 
Okay, where'd my spoon go? All right, give that a little mix. And I'm actually gonna get the bottom onto the top here and put in a little bit more. Okay, now I'm gonna throw in, I'm gonna throw in garlic powder, a paprika, and a little bit of pepper. And that's about all you need for some really good tasting fries. garlic. And like I said, if you just wanted to use a salt, you can go that way too. Um, for those of you who are used to my cooking classes, you know that I measure, but I don't measure, if that makes sense. So I eyeball it. When I'm writing my recipes, I have to pay closer attention to how much I'm using, but day to day, um, I'm eyeballing everything. I think a lot of you are the same way. So if you're cooking alongside of me, this is looking really, really good. And it's smelling really, really good too. So now I have all of my sweet potato fries, all my fries here, French fries. They're nice and coated with a thin layer of coconut oil. They've got salt, pepper, some paprika, and some garlic powder. I'm gonna put a layer of parchment on my um, baking sheet, which is in the oven. So I'm gonna grab that out. And I get my, I get my parchment paper already pre-measured. I get this off of Amazon, but it saves so much time and I don't waste as much parchment paper because it's already pre-cut for me in the size that I want. Okay. Um, Make sure you put your sweet potato fries in one single layer so they can cook evenly. And I was also going to say that with the um, reheat option, because we are doing meal prep, these are really um, tasty if you just reheat them when you want to eat them in your toaster oven or put the convec on in your oven quickly, like at 400, pop them in for just a few minutes to get um, warmed up and you're good to go. If you warm these up in like the microwave or something like that, they won't be as crispy. They'll have this little, you know, mushy texture to it, which we don't want with french fries. Okay, so these are going in the oven. And we'll keep them in there like anywhere from 15, 16, 17 minutes. We'll keep our eye on them and we might even flip them um, halfway through. I just kind of gauge that as I am cooking them. Okay, so we're going in. Woo! Now, how many of you have ever made a dipping sauce for your sweet potato fries? We're gonna make one that is actually, has a coconut yogurt base. So this is plain coconut yogurt. Um, it's the So Delicious brand, and you can get this at a lot of different um, grocery stores now. So I'm gonna take this um, container, which is probably a little less than a cup, but that's okay. I'm gonna put it in my bowl here, and we're gonna whisk some other things in there. It's gonna be a really nice tangy dipping sauce for our french fries. So we are going to add in a little bit of olive oil or coconut or avocado, whatever you have. We're going to add in some garlic, brown pepper, um, some champagne vinegar, and a little bit of maybe a lemon or nutritional yeast. I'm going to taste it and um, see what we're, where we're going to go from there. So. I'm gonna use olive oil and I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon. Can you hear me better, by the way? Oh, the convection, it's a different, it's heating it, um, it's heating it from all over instead of just from the top or the bottom. 
Okay, so I just added the olive oil in it so it'll cook faster. And uh, in my opinion, I think it cooks, well, it's, it's more, it's even, I guess, because it has the air kind of flowing throughout the entire oven instead of just from one dimension. Let me know if that may, answers your question. Okay, I'm gonna throw in a little bit of minced garlic, about a clove's worth. I'm gonna throw in some ground pepper. You don't need much of the pepper, maybe a quarter teaspoon or less. And then we're gonna put some champagne vinegar in here to give it a little bit of brightness. And if you just have regular apple cider vinegar, that's okay too. Um, I like this, it has a little bit of a higher um, note to it. So I put in just a little splash of this. This is really awesome in marinades for meats um, and marinades for plants too. Actually, I'm gonna put just a little bit more in. For those of you who have seen me cook before, you know I'm like, put that in and then a little bit more. <laughs> okay, this is smelling amazing. So I'm mixing it up, salt to that. So if you're cooking alongside me, grab your salt, just put a little bit in there. So you can use this dip as is. It's super tangy. It would, it's amazing with um, the sweet potato french fries. I'm gonna actually show you another twist too. So this is the regular recipe and another twist is to add a little bit of nutritional yeast into this to add like this cheesy element to it. So for those of you who um, haven't used nutritional yeast before, it is, it gives you a, um, a cheesy flavor to the dishes that you're making. This is actually really high in B vitamins. Um, if you are, vegan and you're avoiding cheese for any reason, you can use nutritional yeast or if you're avoiding, you know, dairy for you're taking it out for an elimination diet or you're dairy free in general. This is a great cheesy um, alternative that you can add to sauces and creams and dips. Um, it's even great sprinkled on salads. So when we get to our dish that we're using the kale for, this will actually be a really nice topping at the end as well. So you can use it. It's very versatile. Okay. I'm going to take a spoonful and I'm going to throw it into our dip. So you can, again, you can have the dip as is, and then you can add other things to it. Um, because we want to focus on blending all of our flavors together, we could throw smoked paprika in here because it's on the sweet potato fries. We can also throw it into our kale dish so that the um, flavors blend when you put them all together in a bowl. So don't be afraid to experiment with herbs and spices. You can very rarely go wrong. So I'm gonna throw in a little bit of nutritional yeast into this um, dip, which I said you can also do plain, just like we just made. It's a really nice tangy dip. It's delicious. But I'm also going to add in this other element for you, just because I thought it might be nice to show you another way to use nutritional yeast, especially if it's been sitting in your cupboard for six months. Because <laughs> I don't, I think it's one of those um, buzz things that people are like picking up at the grocery store and they're like, oh, I heard about this. I know I should be using this. And then you don't really know how to use it. So throwing it in marinades and dips is really um, easy to do. Okay, so we have like a light yellowish. I'm just gonna taste this to see if I need any more brightness in it because when you're cooking, you wanna make sure, and Kristen can talk about this too with, it's kind of like essential oils. Like when you're smelling essential oils, you can almost smell like a base and a high. And it's the same things with cooking. When you're tasting, you want to taste something that's like grounding, that's a base, but then end on this higher note, which was why we always want to think about adding the acid at the end of the dish so that we end on this high note. It's um, more favorable to the palate. And if you've ever watched any cooking shows, um, one of the one of the things they do teach, like the participants, I guess, they always are saying, you didn't add enough 
you know, acid to this dish. And for those of you who um, have cooked with me before, you know, I use a lot of lemons. It, they go in almost everything. And one of the reasons is because adding a squeeze of lemon here or there brings that brightness, that last note, um, that really high note up a notch, right? So I'm gonna taste it first, but I have a feeling I'm gonna go ahead and throw a squeeze of lemon in there. And I'll make sure when I provide you the recipes, I will talk about the base recipe and here's the additions that you can also do to it so that you don't have to feel like you have to remember all this. So good, but it needs that, it needs that um, high note. So I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze a little bit of the, oh, that is really good. Yeah. Okay, so I'm squeezing in about a tablespoon of lemon juice, half a lemon. We're gonna mix that up. And I think this is gonna be absolutely perfect. One of my favorite things to do is to um, experiment with making um, homemade salad dressings, marinades, dips, and every single time a lemon goes in it. Perfect. Yum. So you can do the um, base recipe, or if you have nutritional yeast and a lemon and you wanna add that layer in, it's amazing. This would actually also make an awesome salad dressing, which we might experiment with the um, kale too, which I've not done before, but we can experiment. Okay, I'm gonna set this part off to the side. I'm gonna sneak in and um, check on the sweet potato fries, and then we're gonna move over to our other dish. Yeah, I need to flip them. Down. They probably need about, I don't know, 10 more minutes. Just want to make sure I don't burn them while I'm teaching you how to cook them. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move over to another super, super simple recipe. Um, Again, we want to keep things super simple or else we're not going to do them, right? So um, we have the dinosaur kale, as it's called, or the lacinado kale. And did I say that right? Lancinado kale. Um, I don't buy this one as often. I love using the curly kale, but um, I wanted to experiment using this and sauteing it down because this is really nice to saute down because it has that flatter leaf, but it's also called dinosaur kale. And this is what it looks like. So when I prepped this on my cutting board, I actually just took my knife along the vein here and I cut the vein out. So we're not using the vein. Now, if you're doing juicing, you can actually save all the veins and you can actually juice these. Um, but I'm just gonna throw mine out for now, or you can compost it. So then I gave them all a rough chop, so they are about an inch. And that's that. Now with the curly kale, you can do this similar thing, but you can also just strip it with your hands as well. But this one is easier for me to go ahead and use the knife. Okay, so we are going to get a pan going over on the stove. I'm gonna add some coconut oil into it. I'm gonna wait for that to heat up, and then I'm going to go ahead and add um, the kale. Now I'm gonna have a second pan going because outside of the base recipe, I also wanted to show you how you could give this dish um, a little bit more of a nutritious boost. And I had a bunch of mushrooms that I had to eat today before they went bad. So these are shiitake mushrooms. And I, I just did a quick chop, but I'm gonna have these going with a very similar um, technique, you know, just throwing the oil in, we're gonna saute them in a pan right next door here so that I'm gonna have two things going. So I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna get started.
So I have my burners on medium high heat. Coconut oil has a very high smoke point, but I have found that I like to cook usually using, um, I use the medium high heat feature and then turn it down to medium heat uh, more often when I'm cooking the stove top. And I lied, we're actually going to, before we add the kale, we're going to add some um, fragrant shallots and um, some minced garlic, minced fresh garlic. And also in the kale, I'm going to be adding in um, a little bit of fresh ginger after we've got the kale in and it's wilted down a little bit, we're gonna add some fresh ginger to it. And I'm not a huge ginger fan, so I just use a little bit at a time, but if you love ginger, you can put up to like an inch and a half knob that's been minced into this dish, um, and I think you would like it. But since I'm not a, a huge fan of ginger, I keep mine to um, about a tablespoon worth, so it's like a half inch. But be flexible, do what works for you. Okay, so this is going to be heating up over here. So I'm adding in some, I'm going to add the shallots into my larger pan that the kale is going to go into, and I'm going to split the garlic so there's garlic going in both. Once that fragrance hits your nose, you want to go ahead and add your next food to it because you don't want it to burn. Oh, this is smelling amazing. Now, right off the bat, this is going to look like way too much kale, but it will cook down just like spinach does. And actually, to help get everything coated, I'm going to grab a pair of tongs and kind of stir it in so we can get everything coated with the oil. And take your salt, put a little bit more salt on this. Now into the mushrooms, I'm not sure if you've ever made them this way or not before. So we've added the salt, but I'm gonna do a little bit of a fun twist to kind of blend the flavors with our sweet potato fries. I'm gonna throw on some paprika and I'm also gonna throw on some um, ground turmeric. And the paprika is also going into the kale dish as well. Ginger is going into the kale mix. Woo! Fries are done. Okay, so now I have the base of everything is pretty much done. I'm gonna go ahead and taste my kale mixture. I'm gonna taste the mushrooms and I'm gonna see if I have to add anything else to them like extra salt. Mushrooms are 
perfect. They're done. They have this a um, little bit of a heat to it, but they also have that turmeric flavor. It's really, really good. Our kale, which you can see cooked down so much, I actually wish I would have grabbed like two or three bunches of this kale. It'll still work for what we're doing. Um, but I kind of forgot how much this cooks down. Just like spinach, you can have its entire bag and you literally get like a half a cup. Um, but it will still work. So I'm gonna take the kale mixture, I'm gonna throw it into my bowl. mushroom mixture into the same bowl. Then we're going to go ahead and plate this. would be to put the collard greens in the bottom and I'm going to put the mushrooms on top and then the sweet potato fries on the side. Now I know that the mushrooms were um, an afterthought because I saw them in my refrigerator. I was like shoot I have to use these. Um, another awesome topping for this would be a fried egg on the top. Um, a sliced avocado, any fresh vegetables that you have would be amazing on the top of this so you don't have to use the mushrooms necessarily. Okay, I'm gonna grab a few of my sweet potato fries. Oh. Any guesses to what I'm gonna do next? We're gonna throw this bad boy on. I was actually just going to use it as a dipping sauce, but I'm thinking I'm going to put it as a sauce all over the entire dish. It's so good and fresh. I didn't double it. Okay, and I'm going to drizzle this dip all over the top. And you know why this works, guys? We mingled all of the flavors together. So I used the same seasonings or similar seasoning on everything I made today, even including the dip, which is why this is going to work really well. So that's how you would serve this. Now, I really wanna dive into this, um, but I won't. Now, for the meal prepping, for the rest of the um, week, I always use, this is the brand called Glass Lock. I really like it because it keeps all the food super fresh. And I throw all my leftovers in the glass jars, put them in the refrigerator. And like I said, for the sweet potato fries, I would probably um, throw those in a toaster oven so they stay nice and crispy. But for everything else, I would probably just get a cast iron skillet out um, and heat that up stove top. I don't use my microwave unless I'm in a pinch. Um, but if I'm in a pinch, I'll throw it in the microwave. So, so one of the takeaways from today's class would be the um, dinosaur kale. I don't think a lot of us eat it because we don't know how to cook it. And we're like, well, I know we can throw kale in smoothies. Um, I know I can put kale in a salad, but outside of that, to make an entire meal that kind of revolves around this base of a green, um, in this case, 
it's technically a cruciferous a part of the cruciferous family and one of the reasons why I think it's awesome to go ahead and throw it on stovetop is because when you're adding a little bit of that heat element to it it's going to remove those goitrogens the goitrogens um, you know they can build up into your thyroid and they can inhibit absorption of other you know dire minerals and nutrients that your thyroid needs to um, do its job so much like um, you know chlorine holding on to chlorine in your thyroid um, it has can have a lot of the same effect so I love this recipe simply because it's so flavorful you can do this with any type of green collard greens bok choy the curly kale, um, like I said, this is the dinosaur kale. You can use it with any dark leafy green to bring in more nutrients into your diet. And what I did was not hard. It's literally a little bit of oil in the bottom. That coconut oil is so good for our skin. It's so good for our gut. That goes in the bottom of the pan. Um, I love throwing in the fragrant, you know, alliums like the, the shallots, the garlics, even if you had an onion, you can throw that in there. And a lot of people are also asking, you know, what do you think about prebiotics? Well, if you're using things like onions and garlic on a daily basis, you don't necessarily have to worry about taking a prebiotic because you're putting enough of that inulin in your system so that the probiotics can feed off of it. So if you're having a well-balanced diet and you're eating a lot of greens, a lot of plants, you're not going to have to really worry about whether or not you have to be on a probiotic. Now, if you're eating a lot of processed foods and you're not yet to the point where you are doing a lot of plant-based meal preparation or daily meal preparation, then yeah, take the um, probiotic with the prebiotic. Um, let me know if you have any questions, by the way. But um, I wanted to go ahead and give this a bite. The dip has kind of melted down in a little bit. It looks super delicious and creamy. Um, smells amazing. I feel like this is restaurant status, healthy restaurant status. So good. And that would be amazing with an egg on top. It's delicious. Um, I want you guys to give this a try or give, um, sorry, I'm chewing. Give some of the tips that you um, learned today a try. So if you've never heated your pan up before you threw um, roast vegetables on it, you can try that. You can try making your own dip with a coconut um, yogurt base. You can try cooking um, things instead of just spinach stovetop, like the collard greens, the kales, and trying to get a little bit more versatility in there. And then don't be afraid to use seasonings and herbs. You're really, you really can't go wrong. You, you won't be able to like goof up a dish, well, unless you're using like salt for sugar, sugar for salt, that could be bad. Um, but if you're using um, a variety of you know, herbs and spices, especially if you're cooking plant, that's all you need. The oils, the herbs, the spices on top of the plants, especially if you're cooking them stovetop. And even if you're roasting them, keep it super, super simple. Okay, guys, so I have recorded this. I'm going to share it uh, in the Facebook group when um, I have uploaded it, but I am going to go ahead and stop recording and then I will hang out for a few minutes for any of you who have questions either about what we made today, cooking in general, or about our um, Rise Up membership, which we would love to have you if you're not already a part of it. So I hope everyone has an absolutely fantastic Sunday. If there is something that you would like to see demonstrated on a cooking class, please let me know because I do want to make sure that I am giving you what you need and want to make you more successful in the kitchen. Hope everyone has a great day. I'll talk to you soon.